Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, this is Liz Candace. This is Nikki Collins. What up, guys? It's Ethan Stark. Hey, this is Imani Lee Stafford. Hey, this is Jordan Canada. This is Asia Wilson. Welcome to the WNBA Nation. What's up, guys? This is Jason. Uh, it is the wee hours of the morning here, and uh, I'm doing some edits. So I just wanted to explain what happened because uh, I'm going to kind of cut in abruptly into this episode, so I don't want you guys to be confused. So if you didn't watch this live, uh, what this was is Kyle and I uh, were kind of trying out the platform of Twitch. Uh, Twitch is a, a, a live streaming platform often used for gaming and stuff, um, but we, we've been wanting to use it as a show because we think it'll give us the chance to um, have a more interaction with you guys, especially as we record. Um, and, and you'll see a lot of that. You'll see we're, we're responding to questions in real time. We're, we're going back and forth with people. Uh, and we think it's kind of a cool format. So this wasn't supposed to be a regular podcast episode. What this was actually supposed to be was us responding to a uh, simulation via NBA 2K uh, playing as the Seattle Storm versus the Phoenix Mercury. We were going to simulate that game. Kyle and I were just going to kind of watch it, respond to it, uh, almost like a live basketball game watch, except for obviously it's a video game. Turns out that we had our setup wrong, uh, and we ended up overworking Kyle's processor, and it wasn't able to really do it cleanly, so we were dealing with lots of graphic issues. So the first real 15 minutes of this podcast, or of this uh, the stream, were us dealing with technical issues, the glitchiness, some audio stuff. And so I, I didn't include that into this YouTube video just because it's, it's not that fun to watch, and I didn't, I didn't want to torture you guys. So what we did, did is, once we realized that we, we had some more things to work out tech-wise... Uh, we we cut off the game, jumped to just Kyle and I um, doing kind of a free conversation with you guys and 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 the people who are watching. So uh, that's what you're gonna see pop in here. So when it cuts to Kyle, uh, he's kind of beginning to to respond to um, the question of like why are we jumping to Twitch? Why are we recording on that? Uh, and and we kind of go into that, and then we go into to some topics regarding. Uh, you know, draft stuff, anything, you know, there, there were several questions that we got during the course of this that we kind of respond to and talk through. So, uh, just want you guys to know what's going on. So you're not confused. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut now to Kyle, uh, who is beginning to talk about why we are considering, uh, this move to switch and, and what opportunities, uh, we're going to, are going to come from that and, and how it's going to grow the show and grow our community. So, uh, anyways, want you guys to know, thanks. Enjoy the show. Um, yeah. what, what, let's talk a little bit about what this affords us as far as the show goes and what opportunities can come from Twitch to bless us and, and help our show moving forward. Um, in addition to providing some additional content like video, uh, video games, uh, live streams, uh, video interviews, hopefully that we could have with players, coaches, other personalities around the league. Um, let's talk on the selfish side of things about why we decided as a show to maybe transition and incorporate Twitch into some of what we're offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, what we want to be able to do with this show is obviously we have our, our mostly weekly podcast. It's probably going to become weekly as we set up sort of a Twitch streaming schedule. Um, but it'll give us the opportunity to do that, but it'll also give us the opportunity to do other stuff. So Kyle brought up uh, impromptu interviews during the week, uh, having a night where we, you know, we, we play some video games as we get some of these graphic issues worked out. Um, there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to do with this format. And it also gives us the chance to, to monetize this format without being too much of a burden on you guys. As we build up an audience, um, anyone with an Amazon prime account that doesn't already use Twitch, um, this would be a really easy way for you to help support the show because every Amazon prime member gets one free subscription to a Twitch channel. Um, if you throw us your subscription, that gives the show a couple of bucks um, and it doesn't cost you anything extra above and beyond what you already do. So um, it's a chance for people, even, you know, if you've already got the Amazon Prime account, it gives you a chance to support the show. Um, sweet cookies by nature. I appreciate you letting us know that you can hear us both well. We're getting this worked out. This is, this is a whole new experience, but um, that'll be a really great opportunity for us to start building the show. Um, you know, there's only so much we can do without no resources. Obviously, you know, we've bought our mics out of pocket. We bought our cameras. Out, um, but there's a lot more we can do as we're able to get better software, better graphics, all sorts of different things. Um, so so we're hoping that this also gives us the opportunity to uh, um, to grow the show that way. But um, I don't know if there's any points I missed, Kyle. I'm just kind of going by the floor here. 
No, I think that I think you hit all of it. Um, so yeah, just with that, basically the free Amazon Prime subscriptions that can come. You know, if you own that Amazon Prime membership, you can subscribe to us for free. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Uh, we got to wait a few days until we can get our channel monetized. But you can subscribe for free, and that will give us some monetary kickbacks. Um, you get one subscription per month for free. So those of you that have an Amazon Prime membership aren't involved with Twitch at all um, can sign up for a Twitch account, link your Amazon Prime uh, membership to it, and immediately be able to start subscribing uh, to our show and do that once a month. That'll give us a little monetary kickback, and it doesn't take anything out of your pocket, which we really, really love. Um, but uh, so, yeah, that that's one of the reasons why is we wanted to maybe find ways that people could support the show without having to, you know, do too much to their own checkbooks. And uh, nobody uses checkbooks anymore, mm-hmm. but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? To your own wallet, I, we should say. But, um, you know, th- so that you could do it for free, basically give us some support for free in that way. And so that's part of the reason why we mm-hmm. we hopped on to do this. But uh Let's let's actually hop into a little bit of a topic here, Jason. I want to hear some chat reaction as well with this. Um, oh, we got a question already. Okay, thoughts on options for the Atlanta Dream at the number three pick. Uh, one thing that I, one of the resources that I really like, just so you know, Cookie by Nature, um, is this is if you head to, let me pull up, not that uh, Twitter. There we go. No Twitter. There we go. Um, if you head to our friend, uh, at W hoops blogger on Twitter, she's fantastic. Her name's Anila. She's got a blog, a do- it's W basketball That's fantastic. Every single week she will put out a recruiting, uh, or not a recruit, a recruit, a recruit, excuse me, not a recruiting, but a player ranking class by class uh, each week. So for example, uh, right now she just barely posted this and I'm going to actually link that here in our chat so all of you can see that. Um, But, you know, so right now she's got her number one senior coming out this year is uh, Evans out of Louisville, which I think a lot of us would probably agree is looking really solid. Um, you got some other players, uh, obviously a couple Arkansas players popped up in the rankings at six and seven NC state's looking really strong this year. Um, and so they've got a couple players in the top five. Um, and then as you go down, there's a few people who are thinking that Howard out of Kentucky could, uh, declare for the draft. And if so, she could go, uh, number one, unfortunately, You can only declare for the draft if you're going to graduate by the end of your junior year, which she is not. She plans on graduating as a senior, Mm -hmm. not as a junior. So she is not eligible for the WNBA draft this year, Um, which I think would add a little depth to not that this draft isn't deep, I should say, but it would add maybe one more intriguing player that I think a lot of teams would consider at a number one pick. Um, I think that she's played phenomenal at Kentucky. And I think that, uh, in my opinion, moving into the 2020, what year would that be? 2022 draft that Howard is probably looking like a a very, like a way too early favorite for me, uh, at the number one spot there. Um, but Mm -hmm. the, the, the nice part is, is there's some really intriguing international players, um, that the dream could look at the dream have a phenomenal backcourt right now. Courtney Williams, Kennedy Carter, um, it's a good looking backcourt, but uh, I think that they're a little bit shallow in some of their depth in the front court. Um, you know, they've got mm-hmm. they've got Elizabeth Williams, they've got some others there, but really need to shore up some things in that front court. And so, if I were um, if I were the Atlanta Dream, I would be looking heavily at maybe some of these international bigs um, because yeah. there's there's a solid list. Uh, of international bigs that are ready to go. What are your thoughts, Jason? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's some international bigs. Um, there's also a player out of uh, um, there's a player out of Finland. Um, I, I'm gonna mess up the name. A Watt Kuir, six foot four. We'll look into that. Um, has a lot of promise. <laughs> um, so I, I could see that going down into. Say that again. I said we'll we'll look into that. What how to pronounce her name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. What well, if she's in the draft and she gets picked? We'll we'll look up the pronunciation guide to make sure we we don't continue <laughs> to butcher her name. So my apologies, but uh, yeah. So I, I think that there's some promise there. Um, I could also see them um making a play for an existing big. Um, obviously a number three pick is a pretty high up pick. Um, Atlanta, last I recall, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think they have five picks this draft. Um, and I don't know that you really need to to pick up five new people to take into training camp just to cut three of them. Um, so I could see him putting together some sort of package and trying to get a good established big um, to to shore up their post um, by by trading away a couple of those uh, those draft picks. So um, honestly, that's what I would do if I was Atlanta. I don't know if I'd take a you know roll the dice on somebody that I isn't proven in in the WNBA. I'd probably try to trade my way into somebody that I really wanted. Yeah, so I'm looking right now. It looks as though, looks as though Atlanta's got two picks right now. Oh no, they do, they do have three. They've got just one in each round. Um, but uh, yeah, they've got oh, the okay. numbers. The, they've yeah. got the third pick in all three rounds, so they're picking early in each round, um, which isn't which isn't a bad deal. But um, but yeah, yeah I, I I think that's not a bad strategy, Jason. I think that uh, teams like New York, Dallas, Atlanta that need uh maybe a little bit more immediate help because they're so young i think that maybe packaging mm-hmm. these draft picks for uh, you know with another player could um could probably help them out quite a bit and be able to you know kind of shore up some of these rosters and provide teams that are really deep right now you know you take a look at your seattles uh your um, uh, Los Angeles and even teams like uh, like Las Vegas that have a little bit more depth and a little bit more star power and are looking to just shore up a few spots here and there. I think that uh, you know, or yeah, Washington that those those teams would maybe look to trade some of their just you know excess depth that they've got for a shot at bringing in a young player that might be one of those gems. You know, uh, you might find the next Crystal Dangerfield. We don't know. Uh, as as solid as she was coming out way in the second round of yeah. uh, of this last draft and, and coming away with the Rookie of the Year. Um, you never know. And this is the kind of draft where there isn't a clear, like, above and beyond number one pick right now. Uh, you don't know what the teams are going for ahead of you. So if you've got your eye on somebody that you think is going to go at 9 or go at 10, they might not because there's not that clear pick. And so if you want to mm-hmm. shore up that you're getting that player and you're a team like Seattle or Las Vegas or Los Angeles that's picking late in the round and you really want to shore up that player, you can you can you know give up a little bit of your current depth for a shot at one of those players moving forward to make sure that you've got um, a, a solid youthful foundation coming into your program. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's good. Um, it'll be interesting. I, I, I don't want to, I don't go through, I know a lot of people like to do a lot of mock drafts and they do a mock draft like every week and update it. I usually wait until we get closer. Cause there's just so many trades that happen and so many, you know, so much go, going back and forth that, um, I find it kind of frustrating to, to do that and then find out that they don't have that pick anymore. But, um, it's going to be a fun conversation as we get closer to it. Um, uh, just wanted to give a shout out. Uh, it looks like we have a new latest follower, nod knock 81. Thank you so much for yeah. the follow. We appreciate it. Um, and, uh, we've got a few more of you in, uh, watching the stream now. Uh, it's growing. We threw a tweet out and I think that might've gotten a few people. Um, if you just joined us, the reason we're not watching the game is because it was trying to crash Kyle's computer. So we're going to have to figure out some, <laughs> I, uh, I don't have an Xbox broadcasting or a stuff to make it go smooth. Yeah, I don't have an Xbox or PlayStation. I was trying to play it on the same PC. I've got a pretty powerful PC, but I was trying to play it on the same PC that we're broadcasting from, and that wasn't uh, working so well. So we cut the we cut the game, and we're just chatting tonight. We're just hanging out. So um, maybe some of this will yeah. will end up getting cut and, and thrown up on YouTube, or maybe a little bit on the podcast feed. We're not sure, um, but we really just kind of wanted to hop on <laughs> and hang out and, and chat with several of you. Um, yeah, I. No. Uh, and we appreciate those of you here. Um, oh, we're good. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was just gonna. I was just gonna remind everyone, like, hey, if you're on here, like, we're looking at the chat. If you want to ask us questions, if you have takes, uh, throw them out there. We're, you know, we're going back and forth with Cookie by Nature, but we'd love to talk to all of you. Um, Absolutely. What, you know, what are your takes? What questions do you have? What are your thoughts about the coming season? All that stuff. For sure. Um, 
on that note, Jason, I want to take a second and hop over and just take a look at the top 25 uh, that was just released today um, for the NCAA uh, top 25 and take a look at what that's, you know, kind of how that's formulating together. Um, there, there wasn't any real surprises for me as you take a look at these rankings. Obviously, a few teams with with big games, you know, making some appearances like that South Dakota State big upset, um, you know, being able to uh, obviously they made a huge jump into the into the rankings, you know, uh, coming in and at twenty two, um, UConn is still at number three. They're sitting at number three right now and haven't played a game yet, Jason. And I think a lot of people could be mm-hmm. upset about that. Why do you think? Why do you think that we have UConn sitting at a at a number three overall in the standings? Um, yeah, even though they haven't played yet. Oh, thanks for the follow, Cookie Ben Nature as well. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I mean you have to take into consideration what the AP top 25 is. That's a few hundred people that are media staff, like people who have connections that get to vote on these things. Um, I wish that there were people who hardcore fans of the women's game, but the reality is, is a lot of them aren't. And UConn is UConn. So just the name recognition alone is going to get them, you know, a couple number one votes. It's going to get them a lot of, you know, top five. And so I'm not surprised they settle in at number three. Um, it, It, it's such a weird season that we don't have everyone kind of starting at the same time. And, um, you know, I, every sport has been weird this year. You know, 2020 is just weird. Um, I'm just praying that it's a, a year and not a decade like this because, um, <laughs> everyone just says 2020 sucks. And I'm like, it might be the 2020s. Um, but I'm the, I'm ever the pessimist. Um, so, but I, I think that has a lot to do with it. And I also think that UConn is a good team and, like we do know the type of product they're going to put out. We saw their players last year. We know they're going to put out a good product. So do they deserve to be number three without playing? Probably not. Is it fairly accurate? I mean, it's probably within three or four spots of where they're going to end the season. I, I doubt they drop out of the top 10 this year. So um, I don't think it's inappropriate either. I'm kind of in the middle on that. Yeah. No, I, I would probably tend to agree with you on. Uh, I actually, I'm not that upset about them being at number three. I'm just not because while they haven't played, they haven't lost. I mean, yeah, they haven't won, but they haven't lost yet either. And so yeah. it's kind of like the P like, obviously we're not going to bump them to the number one spot if they continue to not play. And let's say Stanford and Louisville both, you know, lose this week. I'm not going to like take them to number one by any means, but I don't have a problem keeping them up there. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to like punish them and drop them to 10 or drop them to 15 just because they've haven't had an opportunity to play. You know, uh, there's some of these teams, yeah. there's some other teams right now, Northwestern sitting at 17 and hasn't played a game. Um, you know, and they, they did drop a couple yeah. because of some of the other teams behind them getting some solid wins, you know, uh, and, and moving up, but Northwestern's sitting at no games right now either. And they're still ranked. And so everybody's upset about UConn because I think UConn's the hot button team, right? Nobody's like, oh, what about Northwestern at 17? Mm -hmm. Nobody's bringing that up because it's Northwestern. If you bring up UConn in the in women's basketball, you're going to have the the people who are just diehard UConn fans and everybody else who seems to hate them, you know, like just because of who they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially uh, some of those like Tennessee fans and and whatnot are going to have a lot of hate for UConn now. I'm not saying that we're all like the big Yukon fans. We have, we appreciate a lot of these teams, you know. Uh, I thought Oregon the last couple of seasons obviously has been a lot of fun to watch. Notre Dame in the past with Jewel Lloyd, with Skydig, those were phenomenal teams. Um Ogumba Wale, you know, and those runs in the in the final four. Mm-hmm. Uh Louisville right now is looking like the real deal with uh with Evans as a senior putting up some serious numbers and Haley Van Lith like looking really solid as a freshman. I think she's going to be a a huge deal uh, in women's basketball moving forward. And I just think that we're not just, you know, focused in on just UConn, but anytime you talk about it, UConn's going to be the hot button topic, especially if there's a controversy like, Oh, they haven't played a game. You know what I mean? So, (laughs) 
<clears throat> we uh, we oh, sent out lost a... one game an entire season. It must be the end. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's, um, it, just it was weird seeing they were going to be a two seed this year. I'm pretty sure as far as projections go. Yeah. Back in March, when we had March man, Mar- when we had March Madness <laughs> cancel, like having that having them at a two seed felt kind of weird, but. Yeah. Cool. Give um, some other teams that I, chance. I don't know if you're looking at the chat. Uh, Iowa B. Iowa B. Brought up um, one of my giant pet peeves uh, is the underutilization of Gustafson out of Iowa um, down in in Dallas. Um, I I don't know what that works up for you, Kyle. But Gustafson, I loved watching her in college, um, and watching her like get drafted, but then get cut and then get picked up. Um, and then Dallas as an organization is still trying to pull itself together. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Gustafson out of uh, Dallas and, and what she'll be able to do there? Or does she need to get traded in order to, to really grow in the league? Uh, what are your thoughts, Kyle? I'm, I am a huge Megan Gustaf- Gustafson fan. Like I love everything that she does um, on the court. I, she, unfortunately, I think may fall in that category of players whose game dominates the college scene. And doesn't translate quite mm-hmm. as well into the WNBA for whatever reason. And you see the opposite of that. You see players who were kind of relatively unknown through their college days all of a sudden hit the WNBA and explode onto the scene and become a huge deal. Um, you know, you, you've got players like that, you know, across the board that have been second, third round picks, undrafted. Um, you know, Erica Wheeler was undrafted, didn't even get picked up. And here she was, WNBA All Star yeah. Game MVP. Um, you have the opposites of those as well, and it's not just in the women's game; it's in the men's game as well. Uh, we've seen that where players have won, you know, uh, the the Player of the Year award, and then gone into the league and kind of like just puttered out and just haven't done much. Um, I mm-hmm. I think that Gustafson has a solid future in the league. I do believe that she's going to be a, a solid role player. I don't know if I see her as an all-star um, just because I think she's an undersized big in the big 10, uh, you know, coming from Iowa. The, well, is Iowa big? I would be, Iowa's big 10, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was big 10. Um, I was thinking Iowa state for a sec. They're big 12, uh, but Iowa in the big 10, you know, like you can get by being a little undersized in college. Uh, there's teams with literally mm-hmm. with like centers that are six one six two. You can't get away with that in in when you're going up against the likes of Liz Cambage, Brittany Griner, Sylvia Fowles. Gustafson, while was dominant in college, I think needs to maybe retool her game. If she can retool her game, become more of a, a stretch four rather than uh, more of an inside post presence, I think she's going to have a longer time in the league. That's just me. Um, and I think mm-hmm. that's going to come down to how the wings, yes, the wings utilize her, but also a little bit on her to, to find some ways to change her game a little bit. So. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. And I, I think it'll be interesting to see there's, I, I feel like certain players when they get traded, you know, or they end up in a new spot with a new team or a new organization, all of a sudden their game, you know, it fits with, with the style. And I wonder if there's some level of it not fitting, um, which I kind of think is interesting because cookie by nature on our uh, chat is bringing up uh, Kalani Brown and yeah. Atlanta and, you know, and Nikki Collins saying that defense is one of the main reasons that they didn't, pl- that uh, Kalani's not playing. And I, I think that that has a lot to do with who she's playing for. When we interviewed Nikki Collins, she is a defense first coach. Yep. That's her mindset and philosophy. She gets her defense locked in. And then she works on the points. Um, and so if you have that type of a coach and that type of a culture, um, somebody who's, who's not as strong on defense but is a better scorer um, isn't going to be the, the fit. So I could see the same thing being true for Megan. Um, it, may be a, it may be a fit issue. And over the next couple of years, as she gets traded or as you know, coaches change around Dallas, like it could be the situation where we just see her click and all of a sudden she takes off and she's an all-star. Um, I think she's got the potential. It's, it's just one of those things that, Right now, something's not clicking, and it's just the question of what is it and how do you get it to change? Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think that's that's pretty spot on. Um, I I, I want to hit on uh, that topic that we just mentioned with Kalani Brown. I think that, uh, by the way, on so I've been playing the WNBA 
uh, you know, seasons and play now versions on the current NBA 2K. I don't have, like I said, I'm playing on PC, so I don't have the next gen. I don't get the my career and the creative player and stuff like that. Uh, not yet. That's coming. Hopefully, uh-huh. uh, hopefully we'll get that rolling here soon. But because uh, because I've been able to do some of those play nows, uh, if you want to cheat code with Atlanta, sub Kalani Brown in for Elizabeth Williams. I'm just telling you. Kalani Brown is like near unstoppable (laughs) on the video game. I don't know what it is about her stats and how they work, but Elizabeth Williams doesn't flow as well in the video game, but Kalani Brown does. Um, So if Nikki Collins starts playing 2K a little more, then maybe we'll see some more Kalani Brown. (laughs) Um, But on a serious note, I think Kalani Brown, um, I think Kalani Brown is going to be one of those players that is, I think she is going to be more long-term in the league. I think she's got too many skills to to be pulled out um however i do see that concern as mobility on defense uh that's a huge liability in this league and anytime you take a step from one level to the next you know when you go from jv to varsity or varsity to college and then from college to the pros it's always a step up in its speed right and so when you have that when you have that step up in speed and you haven't had an opportunity to get acclimated and maybe your mobility isn't there, you're going to be a step behind. And I think that's maybe what we're seeing from Kalani Brown. And once she gets a little more used to it, gets up to speed of the game, I think we'll start to see a little bit more out of her. Um, I think that she wasn't someone who's going to come in and be dominant as a rookie um, because, you know, that just isn't who she was. But I think that I do think she's got a long future in this league. I'm a huge Kalani Brown fan. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I I mean, yeah, we're we're big fans of them and uh it, I I enjoy watching Bigs play. Uh maybe it's cuz I'm not the smallest guy myself, but <laughs> um I definitely enjoy watching that. So, um but this is this is fun, guys. I I like this whole like you guys throw stuff out there and we get to talk about it. Um this yeah, is part of what we were in. talking about why we wanted to move to Twitch. Yeah, yeah, like you know, and the idea that we could actually interact with you guys, like I said, before we we started doing this Twitch thing. It was we make a podcast, we throw it out there, and then we wait a couple of days, and all of a sudden we start getting your guys' feedback and interaction. And we we would try to do as best we could to tie the show into the conversation happening on Twitter. Um, but there's just no way to do it the same as what we're doing now. So um, yeah. if you guys are watching, if if you're enjoying what you're watching, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, comments, uh, throw them out there. We we love this. This is what we want to do. We want to build a community um, that can talk about the league. And uh, yeah, this is just. Tons and tons of fun. I, I don't know if you're having as much fun as I am, Kyle, but oh, I assume a you blast. are. Uh, any of you who are, are, go ahead and watching, uh, that are watching, go ahead and hit us up with a follow. We'd love to uh, make sure that you guys have an opportunity to catch us anytime we're going to be on. Um, we, we absolutely love uh, what we do. Uh, for those of you, I know we've got a couple in here that maybe aren't uh, in the WNBA community or just finding our show on Twitch for the first time. And uh, Jason, let's just chat a little bit. And even for some of you who maybe listen to the show for a little bit, let's talk about kind of a little bit of our background about why we're doing what we're doing um, and and kind of how this show came about a few years back. Uh, but Jason, you want to give a little yeah. bit of background history as to how WNBA Nation came about? Yeah, so um, I've I've got this down to an elevator pitch. So I'll I'll, I'll make Ooh, it a little sweet. longer because every time I tell someone I have a every time I tell someone I have a podcast, I get all these questions. So I've I've come up with my like thirty second elevator pitch, but I'll I'll lengthen it out for the sake of storytelling. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's it really started. We're a group of friends. So there's me and Kyle, who you see now, um, and then there's also Steve and Logan. Uh, we're a group of friends from college. We all went to the same school, Utah State University. Uh, go Aggies. And <laughs> hey, I got we an Aggie shirt on right and, now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I think my wife does too, actually, in the other room. And so we're, we're all buddies. And Kyle and Steve came up with this idea to do a show. Uh, it was called This Is Important. It was basically uh, a pop culture debate style podcast. Uh, over time, Logan and I joined in, and it was really just a way for us to stay buddies. And one day we were talking on Twitter, interacting with each other on Twitter, and it was announced that NBA 2K was going to be introducing women's basketball, the WNBA into the thing. You could, you could pick a WNBA team basically is what they were announcing at the time. And we were all big basketball fans and we had all followed women's sports to an extent. I mean, um, but we hadn't really been hardcore followers of the league to that point. And so 
uh, conversation on Twitter was basically like, hey, this is kind of cool. Let's each pick a team. And when we play each other, we can each have our own teams and we'll, we'll play. And it'll be kind of a fun thing we do as friends. Uh, and so we were kind of deciding who we were going to be fans of. Uh, and the Seattle Storm and the Phoenix Mercury team Twitter accounts got into our debate and started going back and forth with each other. Um, and they ended up offering us just an amazing experience. I unfortunately wasn't able to take it. I wasn't in the area and able to make it at the time. You were living but in you Nebraska guys got, at the time, right? Uh, VIP passes. Yeah, I was in Nebraska at the time. Um, and it was, it was more than I could do. And I had a job that I couldn't quite take the time off that I needed to take to do these trips. Um, but you guys did what we called the hashtag WNBA road trip. Uh, you went <laughs> down to Phoenix. You got VIP passes, jerseys. You got to meet the players. And then you did a road trip. Not all same thing. VIP passes. You were honorary GMs for a day, which I think is still Tweeves. Uh, it's still Steve's uh, Twitter uh, description. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it was just this awesome experience. And as we did that, and obviously as they were doing that trip, I was at home watching all these games online. Um, you know, t- trying to to catch what they're doing and interacting with them and tweeting back and forth. And we just had this epiphany of like, holy crap, this is an amazing league. These are amazing athletes. And they're not getting quality coverage anywhere. And 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 slowly our show started to to focus more and more on the league. Uh, and there was a natural transition point where we're like, okay, like this is clearly what we're supposed to be doing is covering the WNBA, not you know this this pop culture debate, which we still love that. And if you ever want to get into like the the strict definition of soup and whether <laughs> cereal fits, like I'm all in. Like we'll have that debate. Yeah, but we, if you want to check out the, the uh, our rankings of the of the planets, including Pluto, at the time we we threw Pluto in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mercury. Um, <laughs> and so it, it's just it's just one of those things that like like we still love that, but this is really something that we're passionate about. We want the WNBA and really all women's sports. Uh, we've got a sister sister show, NWSL Nation, um, that that. Uh, is is growing and, and getting a, a pretty good base with it too. Like we want to represent women's sports in media. Um, you know, a couple of the guys. I my degrees are in sciencey type things. Um, I'm in medical school right now, but um, a, a lot of our hosts have journalism backgrounds, journalism degrees. Like we just want to provide good coverage. And obviously, we're doing this. You know, out of you know, this is actually my son's bedroom. I kicked him out and making him lay down on the couch right now. So it's like <laughs> we're doing this out of our home. We don't have an ESPN style budget. But if nobody else is giving coverage, we might as well. And so that's what this is. And that's why we want to, you know, with Twitch and being able to monetize, we want to be able to raise some money to just continually improve the quality of what we're offering. Um, I don't know. That's that's my three minute pitch on it, Kyle, of the history of the show. Do you want to add yeah, any details? I forgot. That's pretty solid, man. That looks uh, that sounds exactly like exactly like what it is and why we're here. Um, we'll probably be. Um, transitioning more and more onto this platform. Uh, and also we'll be taking some of these live streams and including them onto uh, our YouTube channel. I think that we're going to be recording a lot of these live and uploading them over onto our YouTube channel as well. So you can check those out there. If you happen to miss the stream, you can check it out. Obviously all of our audio is still going to be good to go. Um, always as always on our podcast feeds whether you listen to apple podcasts or stitcher or mm-hmm. uh whatever else you know uh, icebreaker whatever i can't remember all what they are uh, i heart radio wherever you happen to listen to the show we're still going to be put, be putting those out that's not going to change at all we're not going to be taking anything away we're going to just be trying to add some additional content mm-hmm. um in this arena and um and honestly other than these first few days with a few technical difficulties and realizing what we can and can't do at this point and what equipment we're going to need in the future to make this a little bit better production. I think that that's where, um, you know, we're, we're going to be learning that as we go and hopefully things just get better and better, uh, moving forward with us. Um, as you guys can see, I just want to give a quick shout out as you guys can see over in the, your right hand side of the screen, we have what we're going to call the key. That's an ongoing changing uh, yeah. area of the stream where we're going to have, obviously you see our social media there um, on the right hand side. And then also we've got our merch, uh, a few items from our merch there that you can find at WN- WNBANation.storeenvy.com. Um, and so we'll have different things going through there. Um, that's just going to be part of that, um, that you'll really only get live on Twitch and also on YouTube. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully 
as we do more and more of this, there's going to be more material in there for you guys to check out. Um, maybe some opportunities. Um, we'll be looking for, you know, different interviews, maybe uh, teasing upcoming episodes that we've got. Um, speaking of uh, upcoming episodes that we've got, here's a little teaser for you guys. We have a series going on. Uh, is it a series? Is it? I don't even know what we would call it. it what do we call it? Yeah, a, I'd, I'd call it a series. It's it's a it's a, a an exclusive mini series. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what a mini series. Like a mini docu series, I guess you could say almost like so. Uh, so so a docu -pod? far, yeah, docu yeah. pod. There we go. Um, this has been one of the most fun things that we've done as a show and this has been in large part due to a lot of extra effort by our co-host steve has put in a bunch of research into uh Shout out to some, steve. <laughs> into some additional areas of um wnba history in a series that we call w history so if you have a chance to go and listen to that podcast uh, that we did recently. We are currently in the process of covering the rookie season of one Candace Parker. And those of you who've been in the league for, for a little while know that Candace is the only player in women's basketball to win both the rookie of the year award and the MVP award in the same season. And she did that her rookie season. And so we're just chronicling that. And, and so episode one is up and live. You can go check that out on our um, on our uh, podcast feed, you can check those episodes out. And uh, so we'll have episode two is going to be coming out shortly. We're still finishing the research elements of that. And we'll be recording that here uh, in the next week or two and hopefully have that out uh, before uh, the Christmas time uh, rolls around. So hopefully we'll have that out and going. But if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to our first topic that we covered with W History... That was on the Houston Comets, and I'll tell you guys, that was a three-part so series that I absolutely loved. It was uh, so yeah. Steve would read through like the different elements of the Houston Comets, and we did it in three parts. And for me to just kind of sit and I was, I just would kind of react live on on the podcast and kind of just uh, have discussions as we went along. And I was learning just as you would be learning, um, unless you're a Houston. Comets uh, history, uh, you know, uh, savant. I think that everybody who listens to that series is going to take a lot out of it, uh, me included. And so that was a lot of fun to do. Right now, we're again, we're hopping into Candace Parker's rookie season, and we've got a lot of other ideas for W history um, episodes and, you know, yeah. series to come. If you've got ideas, go ahead and send those to us. You can comment those in the chat right now, or uh, if you're listening to this later, you know, make a comment below, uh, send us a, a tweet, uh, at WNBA nation pod, uh, whatever you need to do. Um, uh, you know, whatever, however you want to reach us, uh, is a great yeah. way to do that. Okay. Well, sweet. Uh, well, well, Jason, uh, you know, we've been on for a little bit here, uh, having a chance, you know, a little bit of technical difficulties earlier on, but I think we got most of them worked out and I think that we're going to be just continuing to learn. Uh, we wanted to go live tonight, even if it wasn't going to be perfect, just so that we could work out kinks and thanks yeah. you, for, to each of you who are listening to this live. Thanks for being here. And uh, you know, kind of getting through some of these, these rough patches early on with us. Uh, I promise that the content is going to continue to get better and better. Um, Jason's been doing a ton of work behind the scenes. Um, and we've actually had some pretty good conversations. Um, in addition to, uh, adding Twitch to our content here that, uh, I'll just leave it at that, but we've got some other really cool things, uh, that we can offer as a show to some of our listeners in the future that once we get those, uh, buttoned up and ready to go. We will have that out and ready for you. Uh, but Jason, any other additional topics or any other thoughts uh, to kind of close out our night tonight? No, um, I, I did see Cookie by Nature uh, interested in doing a collab. Go ahead, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, Twitter at WNBA Nation Pod. Yeah, um, for sure. Same on Facebook. Uh, hit, send us a DM. We'd, we'd be happy to talk with you and, and get something going there. Um, but yeah, we appreciate you guys jumping over. This is a, a learning and a growing process. And I, I think we're going to 
um, have a lot of fun in this format. So, so come on back, subscribe, hit the alert button, do whatever you need to do um, so that you're with us next time. And uh, apologize. We've got faces for radio. So uh, <laughs> we're sorry to add the You're going to get to look at all you. of us and that is going to be a negative effect for some of you, but we don't care. That's all right. <laughs> But but we're having fun, and that's what's important. Um, obviously, there's things that, that we're going to improve. Watching the stream right now, I can see that a lot of the text on the graphics I made is a lot smaller than I realized it would be. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to fix that so you can actually read what our Twitter handle is. It's at WNBA Nation Pod. Um, go over to YouTube. Search for WNBA Nation. We'll pop up. Um, you can catch these videos after we've live streamed. Uh, a day or two later, they'll pop up on YouTube. So if you want to rewatch them or if you miss something, you go catch it there um and uh if you want if you want a t-shirt a hoodie uh some socks uh a baby one whatever you want got if, if you need some merch yeah we got <laughs> mugs yeah if, if if you want some merch uh we got a few different designs over at wnbnation.storeenvy.com uh the the address is kind of odd because it's store envy with one e so the the end of store and the beginning of envy kind of merges their their one e so wnbnation.storeenvy.com uh but we appreciate all the support we appreciate the love uh we appreciate you guys being here with us and uh, yeah, you guys are getting an exclusive because this will be on on Twitch and YouTube. But I don't think this is going on the pod feed. So yeah, <laughs> uh, we we appreciate you being part of our our core group of of people who get to participate in stuff like this. So um, we just appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we're we're gonna do something awesome together. I, I I really think that this this new approach we're taking as a show is gonna help us really build a community more so than we could do with just the podcast alone. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap up the show for tonight. And for WNBA Nation, I'm Kyle Haywood. I'm Jason Snow. And we got you next time. Hey, guys. This is Jason. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I put this screen on here that has a lot of buttons for you to press. You can subscribe. You can get some merch. You can go check out our social media networks. You can jump over to Twitch where we go live at least twice a week. And uh, if you want to watch another video right now, you can click on that button, too. Plenty of buttons. What the point is, is that we really appreciate you being part of our community, and we will see you next time.